what you desire even before this year comes to an end can you begin to say it to him god i'm placing this before you don't give up on god cuz he won't give up on you don't give up on god don't give up on god when you won't give to pray. Lord, we thank you because you are the able God. You can do all things and you are willing to do all things for us because your mercy endureth forever. I ask Lord God Almighty that as we still fellowship sharing the word of God this morning that your word will come to us and your word Lord Jehovah will bring transformation, justification blessings into our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Father because you have answered. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Before you sit down turn with me to the book of Psalms 89. Before you sit down Psalms 89 we are going to read together. I read a verse. You read another verse. Until we get to 38. Psalm 89. I read from verse 15. Are you there? Open your Bible. Even if the media is not showing it. Psalm 89. It says. Okay. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. I want technical to be fast. Please, fast finger. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Then thou speakest in vision to thy holy one and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one out of the people. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the his seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If they break my status and keep not my commandments, nevertheless my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail.
Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. He see. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in the heaven. I read, let's read together verse 39. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Hallelujah. Father, once again, I pray that you will shine your light upon your word in Jesus' name. Shall we have our seats? This morning, I'll be sharing on the covenant of mercy. Covenant of mercy. We are reading a psalm. Psalm that is penned down through the help of the Holy Spirit by a man who experienced the mercy of God in his life. And of course, the Bible says, all things that are written, they are written for us, for our learning. The promises of God, they are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Everything God has said in his word, whether in the whole testament or the New Testament, they are relevant. They are promises meant for us today. Now, we are looking at a man here who enjoyed the mercy of God. And um, God made a covenant with him. And we call it the covenant of mercy. But let's go further and see Acts chapter 13. Verse 21 to 23. And after war, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Cis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. We shall fulfill all my will. Hallelujah. Of this man's seed, at God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior. Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Let's read further verse 33. Verse 33 tells us, look at verse 33. Are you there? Verse 33. God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. The next verse. And as concerning that, he raised him up from the dead. Now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. The last verse, that next verse. Wherefore he said also in another Psalms, Thou shalt not suffer thy only one to see corruption. Hallelujah. Now, covenant of mercy. God found a man after he has rejected another man. The first king in the land of Israel was King Saul. But along the line, Saul lost out of God's favor or mercy. And of course, even when Samuel was still praying for Saul, God told Samuel, I have moved on. Fill your horn with oil. I'm sending you to the house of Jesse because... I have found for myself a king. And that was why, how David was anointed as king. And we begin to ask, what did Saul do that David did not do? 
as a matter of fact, if you want to go by comparison, you will see that the evils or the sins of David was more than that of Saul. <laughs> Praise God. But yet, God said, I have found David. He's a man after my heart. And God now established a covenant of mercy with him. Hallelujah. No wonder God said, I will have mercy. Upon whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion upon whom I will have compassion. He said, it is not for he that will it, nor he that run it, but the Lord that showeth mercy. May you receive God's mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you can see, I'm still coming back to that psalm. In Isaiah 55, verse 3 to 7. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. You can see that even after David has gone, the prophets, they were still referring to this mercy, the sure mercy of David. Because God has said that the throne of David will endure forever. It was the enduring or the endurance of that throne that brought about Jesus Christ our Savior. Who came from that lineage? Hallelujah. And that is what we have read in the book of Acts. That Jesus Christ came from the stood from the lineage of David. And when God says that his throne shall be established forever. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he had glorified thee. Hallelujah. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is taught. And let him return unto the Lord and we have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Shout hallelujah. Now, what are we saying this morning is that if you want to receive the mercy of God, God can see strike a covenant of mercy, hallelujah, with his people today. You can enjoy the mercy of God. Now, what is mercy? Mercy appears in the Bible as it relates to forgiveness or withholding of punishment. Where there is mercy, God forgives and God withholds punishment. Shout hallelujah. I always explain what redemption stands for and I will continue to talk about it. When we talk about redemption, Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Now he shed his blood for us. We said that that death on the cross of Calvary produce redemption from sin. Say one. Number two, redemption from sickness and diseases. Number three, redemption from fear of death and untimely death itself. Hallelujah. Because one thing the devil has terrified people with throughout ages is the fear of death. Hallelujah. And number four, Redemption has brought us to be delivered from causes. Redemption from causes. Galatians 3, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He was made a cause. For it is written, causes everyone that is hung on the tree. That the blessings of our Abraham might rest upon the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Now, so redemption from causes. Then redemption from uh, 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 poverty. The redemption from shame. Because instead of shame, he has taken our shame to give us glory. But where I'm going is this. Hallelujah. When we talk about redemption from causes. As a child of God, we are redeemed from causes. We are redeemed from the causes of the law. Hallelujah. Now, this is one of the things that the devil terrifies people with. When somebody is born again, Satan will tell you that, you see, yeah, you are born again, but you know all the evil that you have done, you will still get the punishment. 
And that is why some people today in their own uh, church or their own doctrinal belief, there is what to call penitent. Pen, pe, I think it is, you know, you know, when you when you have to suffer for your sin. If you go to some place, I don't want to mention church. Now, when you go there, if the cross or the status of Mary is there, you may have to crawl on your knees as a sign of, repent, of receiving punishment for your wrongdoing. Some people, they believe that, well, ah, maybe what is happening to me is because of what I have done before I gave my life to Christ. Is the punishment of my sins. Because I have, I, have, I have aborted so many, you know, children. And so because of that, the reason why I am now having delay in childbirth is because maybe the punishment of my sins. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. That is error. He said, there are sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. So, when God show mercy and somebody is forgiven, we are saying that mercy, it relates to forgiveness and withholding of punishment. When God show mercy upon a life, your sins are forgiven and the consequences of that sins is what? Is removed. It is not that, well, why God is allowing this sickness in my life, it is because of the wrong thing that I have done. The reason why I am poor, is, but where I am poor is because, you see, it is the consequences of what I have done in the past. When you are, you are born again, if you are in Christ, God does not have record of wrongdoings for his people. That is what mercy does. Shout hallelujah. You also see that mercy is the fruit of compassion. Mercy is what? The fruit of compassion. When God has compassion upon a life, he show him his mercy. Hallelujah. When God has compassion upon the person, the person begins to enjoy his mercy. And of course, Compassion is an act associated with mercy. Now, whenever you see compassion, mercy will show up. My prayer this morning is that the Lord will have compassion upon you. Amen. And mercy will speak for you. Amen. Where the enemy said it is finished, mercy will appear for you. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's look at the life of David a little bit closer. Let's look at amazing characteristics of David that made him a man after God's heart. Number one, one of the things you see in the life of David is willingness to acknowledge his mistakes. Willingness to acknowledge his mistakes. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, you can write it down, 2 Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 to 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 1 to 12, that is when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he was instrumental to the killing of Uriah, the husband of this man. Of God, not that alone, in all his gimmicks now to even cover what is wrong doing, you know, he made even Uriah to drink, to do a lot of things. Now, it was a great wickedness. But yet, by the time prophet Nathan came to David, because in those days, a king has the final say. If he say your head should be cut off, it will be cut off. And so, when Prophet Nathan came, he came in form of a narration of a story. Oh, there is a man in this land, you know, he's a man, he has so many sheep and plenty sheep, but there is another man who has only one, one sheep. And of course, the man who has plenty of sheep has a visitor and of course, he did not kill any of his sheep. Now, he went to go and take the one that has only one. And he slaughtered it. And by the time he finished, David said, Wow, in this land, surely that man deserves to die. <laughs> and Nathan said, you are the man. 
What did I do? Okay. Whatever you want, if you want plenty wives, you have all it takes to have it. You are a king. But somebody who has one, you have gone after that. When David had this, he could be annoyed. He could be arrogant like Saul. You remember when uh, Samuel came to tell, you know, uh, um, what the name? You know, Saul. And said, look, you have done wrongly. You did not wait. It is not your duty, you know, to perform sacrifice. But you have gone ahead. He said, because the people are going away from me. And so because of that, I force myself. But if you see that in all those statements, there was no statement of repentance. And by the time Samuel said, what have you done? And Samuel was, was, was going. Was going. He pulled Samuel and said, ah, now come and honor me before the people. He was concerned about his honor. Why is not bothered about how he has dishonored God? And said, come and honor me. Don't go. And as he pulled his skirt and the skirt of Samuel, you know what? Turn. And the man looked at him and said, finished. God has turned your kingdom. Look at when he was even being confronted, you are asked to go and kill the Amalekite. Don't spare anything. And by the time he came back, he said, I have done the will of God. And the man said, what is the sound of the sheep and the goat and whatever that I'm hearing? Oh, I forgot to tell you. All those sheep and the best of the animal, the cattle, you know, the people spare them to make sacrifice unto the Lord. And of course, lest I forget, King Aga also was spared. For what purpose? Maybe when we put him in the palace, you know, because uh, his country was an established country, we can begin to draw knowledge, you know, from him. For the reason best known to Saul. And Samuel said, do you think God have interests in sacrifice like obeying the voice of the Lord? For your information, to obey is what? Is better than sacrifice. Shout hallelujah. But all I'm saying is that with all those discussions, you will not see repentance. It was protecting himself, arguing his points, making, you know, I mean, giving explanation. And today, that is what some people do. That's why the mercy of God will elude them. In fact, there is something that is missing in the church. Hallelujah. And that thing is that many people in the church have become so proud and cocky. You know, so proud to think that, yes, ha, ah, we are for Jesus. Even when there are little, little foxes in their life that spoil the vine, they will not take record, I mean, cognizance of it. Praise the Lord. I don't know where I was. I was talking somewhere. I said, you see, if you say you are holy, you are not the one to say you are holy. Praise God. People will see your life and say, wow, look at this sister. Oh, look at this man. Oh, look how thank God for his life. But you yourself, you are not satisfied. So, and that's why you see when people say that we are holiness church. I belong to that category before. Praise God. It annoys me these days. What do you mean by holiness church? Do you know what holiness is? Shout hallelujah. Our God is holy. We are to come to the standard of holiness of God. But how many of us have reached that standard? In this book of Psalms, the sing song we sing, there is none holy as the Lord. It was, uh, no, it was uh, Hannah that um, made that statement. For there is none holy as the Lord. For there is none like him. Neither is there any rock like our God. Hallelujah. There is no level of holiness that a man can possess that can get to God. But when you say that, be ye holy as your father in holy, is holy is that the principle of God righteous, I mean, the spirit of God's holiness is programmed into your heart. Praise God. And of course, the righteousness of Jesus Christ clothes you. Is somebody following me? That is what happened. And because there is the principle of God's holiness in your life, and that's where that the fear of God is not far away from you. When you do anything wrong, the Holy Spirit will tell you, you immediately will do what? You, you tremble and you repent. As we continue to come closer to God, 
So many things will be revealed in our lives. That's why it says that as we walk with God, if we walk with the Lord, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with the Almighty. Is that not so? With one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. And if we say we have no sins, what happened? We deceive ourselves and the truth is not enough. It is not because that person is not born again. But because the more you walk with God, the more God will point to some things in your life, hallelujah, that require you to ask for mercy. To ask for cleansing. To ask for purging. And that first John chapter 2 continues. That is chapter 1. I quoted chapter 2 continues. It said, my little children, do not commit sin. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he has been made a propitiation for us. You know, one of the things that used to happen in the 70s, in the yester years, when you, when you preach like this and people see their life, they come to the altar. Are you following me now? They come to the altar and say, God, I'm sorry. Now, to settle themselves with, it's not because they are committing some sins that people are, I mean, assume to be big. But one thing I want you to understand that there is no sin that is bigger than the other. How many of you understand that? Praise God. In those days when they, when they, when they used to kill people by a firing squad, people would go and look at the people that is to be killed by a firing squad as condemned robbers. Praise God. But in the presence of God, those who have gone to watch, they are what? Also robbers. They are also thieves. <laughs> because the Bible says, if any man offends in one of the law, is what? Is guilty of all. And that's why nobody can cleanse himself except the Lord cleanses you. Because if you violate one, you have violated all. No wonder the Bible says, who can cleanse himself from secret sins? Secret faults. So, what I'm saying, people of God, is that there is mercy, covenant of mercy, and that must drive you to God's presence at all times to make sure that you walk with the Lord. Now, look at this man. He was a man, willingness to acknowledge his mistakes. When Nathan narrated all the stories and said, you are the one, what did he do? He said, I have sinned. He said, I have sinned. Can you see my life now? That I have sinned. I have done the wrong thing. Immediately, God spoke through the prophet again. He said, well, because you acknowledge your sin, your sins are pardoned. What Saul did was not as much as what David did. But Saul was a man who was proud. Who we argue with his creator instead for him to look for God's mercy. Praise the Lord. Another thing you see in the life of David, number two, humility to recognize that he was weak. Humility to recognize that he was weak. David recognized that he was vulnerable. And any time he's not going to fight it. Praise the Lord. He's going to submit in humility, asking for the mercy of God. Number three, there is another thing that God loved in the life of David. It was courage to step up in challenging situations. Courage to step up in challenging situations. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. In that 1 Samuel chapter 17, that was when he went to the battlefield. And he saw the Goliath coming out to harass the army of, 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 of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And to harass the army of the Lord. And nobody in, East, in Israel could confront this man. King Saul was supposed to lead the battle, was cooling off somewhere. He could not do anything. And all the generals have become demoralized, demobilized. They could not do anything. But this young boy came to give food to his brothers at the, at, at, I mean, his father sent him to go and bring things to his father. And he had, he said, he said, who is this? They said, ah. But the next thing he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is speaking against God, Jehovah? That is defiling, you know, the, you know, the, the, the army of the Lord. 
that was a man. He was not a fearful person when it comes to, you know, recognizing what God can do. Hallelujah. Many people today, reason why they are not enjoying God's mercy is that because they don't trust God themselves. They don't have belief in God. They don't hold God. They don't believe that they are having a big God. A God that can kill and make alive. Shout hallelujah. If you look at that verse 45 of last chapter 17 verse 45, then said David to the Philistine, even when he was confronting Goliath, said, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast what? Defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee, and I will give it to the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day, unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God what? where? In Israel. Who was talking? A man that has no cutlass. He has no sword. He has no spear. He has no javelin. He has nothing. He only has catapult. What you call catapult today? And he was looking at a giant that everybody was afraid of, but he was bold to say, look, you, you are not better than the, than the bear and the lion that I've killed in the field with my bear hand. You, I will cut off your head. When he was talking, you asked, what is he going to use to cut off his head? But eventually he used the sword of Goliath to cut off his head. Shout hallelujah. He was a man that was daring. When it comes to God, he believed in God. People of God, if you are going to enjoy God's mercy, you must understand who God is. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You must believe God, that God can show mercy. That God is the Alpha and the Omega. Whatever he say you want to do, we do. No matter how you have condemned a man, when mercy appears for him, he will change the story. The narration will be changed. There are people today who say, ah, he's finished. And by the time God appears, you begin to say, did he pass through that? No wonder David said, even if I pass through the shadow, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If you understand that, David did not say that God will not chastise him at times for him to get form. But you understand what the rod does for an animal is to bring correction, not to kill that animal. Shout hallelujah. When there is a rebuke through the word of God, when there is a, there is a, a correction through the word of God, it is not to condemn you. Hallelujah. It's for you to recognize that mercy is available with this God. If you come to him, and that was what David said, even in anything, I know that the rod of God and the staff of God, staff is meant for leading, rod is meant for what? For correction. And when I receive the, the rod of, the, of God, you know, when I'm rebuked, and if I receive guide, they will comfort me. I will get comfort. My life will be in line. Shout hallelujah. So he was a man of courage. Who can step up to challenging situation because he believes in God. Number four, steadfast love for God. This man has a steadfast love for God. Amen. And of course, this love is shown in different ways. In worshiping of God. Hallelujah. You know, playing all the harp, all the things like that. You see so many psalms he composed to worship God because he loved God dearly. And people of God, you must change your attitude about God. You must love God with all your heart. Praise God. You must love God with all your heart. Let God know that you love him. See God as God that you love. And another thing in Psalm 104 verse 34. Psalm 104, I'm still talking about steadfast love for God. He said in Psalm 104 verse 34, he said, My meditation of him shall be what? shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will continue to meditate, think about Jehovah. And when I'm thinking about him, my meditation of him shall be sweet. 
I will be glad in the Lord. In other words, the more I think about God, the more, the more I begin to see the mercy of God, the more I begin to see that God is a God that wants to embrace us. God who wants to help us. God who wants to lead us in the right path. If you understand, say, I understand. The last thing there, strength to change. He was a man that was flexible in the hands of God. Strength to change. In Psalm 51 verse 10, it cap captured, you know, the result of his repentance after all that he has done. If you read from the, the beginning, he was talking about, uh, verse 10 says, Create in me what? A clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. People of God, if you want to enjoy God's mercy, you must be flexible. You must be ready to change. If you are not born again, you must be ready to come to the altar and give your life to Jesus. If you are a Christian and you discover that you are, it's a weak point or sin in your life, you are not covering up. Praise God. You'll be able to say, God, have mercy upon me. You want to yield. You want to tell God and God, yes, I am in the way. I am walking the light. When I see what is wrong, when I do what is wrong, you want to commit your heart to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Before we pray very quickly, what are the coverage of this sure covenant of mercy? When we talk about the covenant of mercy, using David you know, as a case study, now, what are the mercy? When God says he will show mercy unto us and he's going to you know, have mercy upon us and we are asking for the mercy of God. What are the things that are the content? Look at Psalm 89. I said we could go back to that Psalm. Psalm 89 verse 20. He said, I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. Have I what? Anointed him. Shout hallelujah. The first thing that is the content of mercy is divine anointing. What do I call it? The oil of God is upon the life of a man that God is showing mercy upon. He said, I have anointed him. God, why do you anoint a, a young boy? The last born, number eight, out of uh, eight children, the last born. I have anointed him. There is nothing anybody can do about it. May the oil of God never dry upon your life. When you are enjoying the mercy of God, the oil of God upon your life. Forget the one that we pour. There is oil. Before Samuel poured oil on, on, on David, there is a oil of God upon his life already. Shout hallelujah. God's oil was upon his life. And so, when the calculation want to change, and Jesus said, this is my firstborn, Eliab, let him be the one to be anointed. And Samuel has concurred, has agreed, and everyone reacted and said, no. I don't look at the way man looks. Man looks at the outward, I look at the heart. So, because of that, this one, I've rejected him. What about Shama, God? This nestborn, say, I've rejected him. What of this one? God said, I've rejected him. Uh -uh. And all those who are hefty, who are stout, who are good looking, God rejected them. And the rest, God said, ah, and Samuel said, I have never made a mistake in my life. Didn't I hear God well before I come to the house of Jesse? God, you are confusing me. Did you say the house of Jesse? Or there is another Jesse I do not know? And God said, ask him if that this is all his children. And he said, come, are these all your children? Oh, there is one. This last born is in the field. Things like this is not important to invite him. He doesn't understand. <laughs> Praise God. And we are asked. That young boy. On that field. If there was no anointing. How could he have been able to kill, kill a bear with his hand? If the oil of God was not, was not upon his life. How would he have been able to kill a lion? <laughs> Shout hallelujah. The hand of God was upon him. He was there. At times, maybe with his flute, instrument of music, and looking at the sheep and looking at everything, enjoying God in the both old, both in the sun, both in the cold, is there, not complaining. What was he doing? Taking care of the family business. Alone, taking care of the business of the family. And he did not complain. 
And that's why you see, when God is taking you on a journey, do not complain. You don't know what God wants to bring out of your life. When you are called to serve, keep on serving. The oil of God is there. When there is a time, you know, of revealing you. Some of them say, ah, ah, that man, oh, God just lifted him. Where has he been? In the church. Ah, we don't know him. You can't know him. Because at times God keeps his people and begins to prepare them as they cooperate with him. Hallelujah. To the time of revealing them. Number two. The content of this message was number two, divine establishment. Give me verse 21. Divine establishment. The mercy, covenant of mercy that we are talking about, you know, it gives you divine establishment. He said, with whom my hand shall be what? Shall be established. My hand also shall do what? Shall strengthen him. When God's mercy is upon the life of a man, God becomes the strength of your life. You are stabilized. You are established. So when you are asking for mercy, you must understand what you are asking for. This is what David enjoyed. He was established. Do you know how many battles that confronted him? Yet, he was established. Amen? With all... You see, when you are enjoying God's mercy, it is then you can move through the valley of the shadow of death. And your life is preserved. Because mercy establishes you. Number three... That verse 21, yes. You talk also about divine what? Strength. The strength of God. God gives strength to those who are fainting. He gives strength to the meek. He gives us strength. The ability to continue. Even in the face of challenges, there is a strength of the Lord to forge ahead. The mercy of God produces strength. Number four, four Verse 22, I call it divine defense. The mercy of God brings divine defense. That the enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor the son of wickedness do what? Afflict him. God said, I will defend this man. <clears throat> he said, the wicked, the enemy shall not exact, shall not lord it, okay, over his life. And the son of wickedness will not afflict him. May that be your prayer. <clears throat> that ends forth, you will no longer be afflicted. The mercy of God defends a man. Protects a man. So when God says, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. May you be candidate of God's mercy in Jesus' name. Number five, now you see, the mercy, the content of this mercy or the coverage of this mercy is divine victory. Divine victory, verse 23, it says, and I will beat down what? His foes before his face. And plague them that hate him. Go fight for those that he show mercy upon. I will beat them down. Some of those battles that David fought. You are confronting Philistines. An organized country. Hallelujah. What the, the man who has the soldiers, who has everything, who has a struck your soul, could not confront them. But the man that is running away from being killed, he was still fighting the battle of the Lord eh, with few people that he has. The people that, you don't know the kind of people that gather to David? Eh? The people you will call vain fellows. Ordinary people. Disgruntled element. Amen. The people don't have, that maybe because they don't have food to eat and that's why they said, what are we going to do? Let's just continue to follow this man. Eh? You know? Praise God. They are the people that became the mighty men of David. God fought, beat against all his foes. So, victory was given to David all around. Hallelujah. When God's mercy covenant of mercy works upon your life, God will fight for you. And I see God fighting your battle. Amen. I said the Lord will fight your battle Amen. in the name of Jesus. Number 6, verse, that's verse 24, I call it divine lifting or exaltation. He said, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his what? His own be exalted. 
What we call your horn is your personality. Is your destiny. Hallelujah. That is your horn. What you represent on the half. God says your horn shall be exalted. Not because of what you did right. But because of the mercy of God. Not because of what you know how to do. That's why the Bible said the race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is it that God just, the Bible God it says he lifts one, he put another one down. And you cannot question him. He said, I will overturn. I will overturn. I will overturn. Until the one that it belongs to shall come, shall surface. All right? God changes, he changes. God, God overturns. That's why there will be a lot of overturn in this country. Until the desire of him that God want to give the right positions to will emerge. Will be seen in the name of Jesus Christ. So what are we saying is that when the, it is God's mercy. Mercy of selection. It is God that select a man. It is God that lift up a man. So when you are praying, God have mercy upon me. The covenant of mercy when it's established upon the life of a man. I tell you, God says, his horn shall be exalted. Say, so my horn without exalt, like the horn of what? Of unicorn. And I shall be anointed with what? With fresh oil. May you be anointed with fresh oil on daily basis in the name of Jesus. When you wake up in the morning, you must have enough oil upon your life that will carry you through that day. Most of the time, you see, our walk with God is one day at a time. Amen. Amen. Yesterday is gone. This is a new day. By the time you finish the, 40, the 24 hours of today, God will give you another one tomorrow from 12 midnight. Praise God. And God will renew his faithfulness, his covenant upon your life. Hallelujah. So your failure of yesterday is gone with yesterday. And his mercy is renewed upon your life today. A new beginning is given to you today. Hallelujah. Because that is our God. He said, there are sins and iniquities. He said, he will remember them. He said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, because you suffered yesterday, because your three years ago was not good, because you passed through the wilderness, you will not remain in the wilderness forever. Yeah. Mercy will bring you out of the, of, of the wilderness. Mercy will bring you out of the right path. Yeah. Every breakdown, Shall be, led, shall be led to what? To break through. Because that is our God. But some people, their mind has been conditioned. That's why they talk about the poverty from their family, background, the causes in their lineage. Even when Christ has redeemed from the cause of the law, they are still conscious of causes. I say, well, everybody's, nobody makes it in my family. I even try. Even the one that is just because, ah, this one, I really try. You have not tried anything. God wants to showcase your life. God wants to make your life beautiful. God wants to lift up your head. God wants to make you a shining example. God wants to make you the epistle that people will read and say, wow, who did this? We say, who? It is God. It is Jesus. Shout hallelujah. That is it. Divine lifting and or exaltation. Number seven, Coverage of this mercy is divine prosperity. Look at verse 25. Divine prosperity. He said, I will set his hand also in the sea. That is talking about business. And his right hand in the rivers. I will set his hand in the sea and you know, in the rivers. That's talking about all around prosperity. God, mercy, hands over prosperity. Legacy of prosperity into the hands of man. And that's why I don't fail God in giving, in tithing, in offering. Do your part so that God will be able to do his part. But there is nothing God cannot turn around. Don't say it's a small business. Don't call your business small business again. Hello? Don't call it what? Remove that one. Because all those businesses you, you, you saw today started from somewhere. Don't say it's small business. Prophesy to that business. See that it is God's mercy that is turning things around for you. It is the Allah that is working on your behalf. 
It's God that is turning things around. So begin to believe. You are going to, there is no small business. They see it as big business. See it that, look, it's going to be a Colmelgore tomorrow. It's going to be, you know, what an employer of labor tomorrow. It is what you see that you are going to get. Because you believe in the ability of God, in the power of God to do all things and the mercy of God that is set upon your life. Say amen. amen. Number eight, divine acceptability. Look at verse 26. Divine acceptability. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father. It is somebody that accepts you that allow you to call him, him a father. Am I right? Now, he said, yeah, thou my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Look at the next verse. To verse 28. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the heart. Look at it. That is one of the prophecies concerning Jesus. Amen. And of course, it is still the prophecy concerning the church today. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. That is divine acceptability. May you be acceptable. Before the almighty God at all times in the name of Jesus Christ. Before this year runs out, every dividend of 2022, may mercy hand it over to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Divine acceptability. A man that God has mercy on is accepted. If you are the one, you will judge David. If you are the one, you will not give David a pass mark. If you are the one, David should go to hell. Praise God. <laughs> but that is your own opinion. In God's opinion, there is a sure mercy of David that transcends even him. You will see it in the next one. Verse uh, the number nine. I call it divine help for his offspring. Divine help. We'll look at verse 29. His seed also will I make to endure forever. I pray that what God will start in your life or what God is doing in your life will not die with you. Amen. It will extend to your children. Amen. Your children, children. Amen. That your legacy on the surface of the earth shall be strong and shall be mighty. In the name of Jesus. By the sure mercy of the almighty God. Hallelujah. His seed also will I make to endure forever. And is thrown as the days of heaven. The next verse. If his children forsake my law. And walk not in my judgment. Can you see mercy? Look at what God said. If they break my status. And keep not my commandment. The next verse. Then will I visit their transgression with the rod. I will beat them. And their iniquity with stripes. What was the next thing? Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to do what? To fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God said, look, this man, every, everything that came out from him shall be preserved. If I correct them, yet my mercy, my loving kindness will not be taken away from them. That is how can God love a man? Praise God. Jesus is not coming to sit upon the throne of Abraham. He's the throne of David. Praise God. Abraham is some place. But when it comes to a man that enjoyed the mercy of God, that had the covenant of mercy upon him. Hallelujah. It was David. That is number what? Number nine. The last one. Divine oath or covenant of God's faithfulness in his generation. The mercy, coverage of this mercy, there was a divine oath or what you call covenant of God. Do you know, just like Abraham, the Bible says when God was uh, uh, was making oath with Abraham, there was nothing greater that God could, you know, could swear with. God swear by himself. Said in blessing, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. Look at what God has to say about uh, the mercy, sure mercy of David. Look at that in that um, verse 34. Let's look at verse 34. Hallelujah. He said, my covenant will I not break. Can you see? God said, I will not break this covenant. Nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. The next verse. Hallelujah. Once I have sworn by my holiness, 
that I will not lie unto David. For God who sworn by his holiness, I am a holy God. Whatever I say, I will not withdraw it. And God said, look, I have sworn unto David. Look at the next verse. His seed shall endure forever. And his throne as what? As the sun before me. The next, the next verse. It shall be established forever as the moon. And as a faithful witness in heaven. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the sure mercy of the... Well, so when we talk about covenant of mercy, these are the coverage. God made an oath. And that's why you see the children of Israel up to today, they are unbeatable. Abi, go and look at field of engineering, field of uh, agriculture, field of any field is an Israeli. Even something you see in America, in Britain, it is the Israeli, it is the Jew, American Jew, you know, Kedika Kedikon Jew, German Jew, praise God. They are there. If an Israeli gets to this place, what you have not seen, he will see it. He will turn it to wealth. Praise God. There is that covenant that they will endure forever. May you endure forever. May your seed endure forever. I'm stopping here. I'm just showing you that there is what's called covenant of mercy. And we look at the case study of a man that enjoyed this covenant. Our God who did it for David can do it for anyone. But look at the life of David. He was a man that was humble. He was a man that when he was wrong, he would not defend himself. He was a man that was ready to change. He was a man that was tender, hallelujah, before the almighty God. And God saw this, he said, I have found David, a man after my heart. Go and look at other kings. God said, and they did, 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 did but they did not have a perfect heart. They did not serve God with a perfect heart. But God saw a man. He was not an angel. It was, the life of David is just the life of the church, the life of us today. I always tell people, I said, you can't get a perfect church. Church is a system. At times when we begin to say, hey, ha, this, you continue to hear noise about church. There is nothing you want to do about that. But let every individual member of the church sort himself out before the almighty God. Praise God. Because church is made up of human beings. We are saved by grace for those who are saved. It is all by grace. And there is what we call the flesh that is still with us. That's somebody will be angry. Somebody will do something. Somebody will fight. Somebody, somebody will almost say that, ah, this is not the matter of born again. I want to put born again aside. Eh? I will deal with him. After that, I will go and take my born again. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And after he has done all those things, you think that God will, will, will cast him off. He will come and say, God, okay, oh God, I have come again. God, have mercy upon me. And God says, okay, you are welcome. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. That is the way God did with us. Amen. Amen. But he just wants us to walk with him. To acknowledge. Not to defend ourselves before him. And I shall tell you, his sure mercy shall be with us. Shall we rise to our feet as we pray together? I want you to just thank God. If you are born again, thank God that Lord, thank you for saving my soul. And if you are not born again, say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. I also want to enjoy this mercy. Lord, forgive me my sins. Let me part make me a partaker of your mercy. Make me a partaker of your mercy, O oh Lord. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my shortcoming. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me this morning. Is somebody praying? Look at your life. Where are you wrong? Where is you, are you weak? Why don't you tell the Lord and say, God, I am weak, but you are strong. Lord, give me help. Come and help me. Come and give me grace. Ask for God to sanctify you with the blood of Jesus. Lord, strengthen me in my weaknesses. 
Let your grace abound upon my life. Somebody praying this morning. No matter what the devil is saying about you. Well, no matter what the enemy is saying, that is the enemy's opinion. God's opinion is that there is a sure mercy. I will have mercy unto him, I will have mercy. I will have compassion unto him, I will have compassion. Can you pray for God's mercy this morning? and say, God, look at me. Oh. I need your mercy. The covenant of mercy, let it be established upon my life and my generation. Covenant of mercy upon my life and my offspring, on you know, my household. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon us. So when you are praying, God, have mercy upon me. I've just shown you the things that are content of that mercy. When you have that mercy, there is divine prosperity. There is divine elevation or lifting. When you have that mercy, everything begins to fall in line for you. Divine acceptability. Divine prosperity. With the mercy of God, divine victory is sure. God will fight for, for, fight for you. will defend you. You will be established. Tell the Lord God, establish me. Establish my going and my coming out. Establish the work of my hands. Let your mercy attend to my life. Is somebody praying this morning? Mercy over your family. Mercy over your husband. Mercy over your children. When mercy breaks forth, I tell you, that person stands firm. You will stand. Mercy brings anointing. Lord, release your oil upon my life. Let me enjoy your oil, O oh God. That my head will not lack ointment. My head will not lack oil. I don't know what is troubling your heart. Ask for God's mercy. Is it your career? Is it your job? Is it your business? Is there something that is making your heart to fear? Ask for the mercy of God. Ask for God's mercy. God, let mercy speak for me. God, look at me. I can't help myself. God, I need your help. If devil is condemning you of a sin in your life, tell the Lord, God, I receive your mercy this morning. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my shortcomings. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. How many people want to join me at the altar this morning to say, God, I am weak. Forgive me my sin. Anything that the devil wants to capitalize upon, let your message show forth. I say, God Almighty, maybe you have not given your life to Christ or you are giving your life to Christ, but you want to say, Lord, I am here to dedicate my life. Lord God Almighty, Lord, I humble myself before you. Lord, I ask for your mercy. Join me at the altar. As many people, can you quickly come? Let's pray together. You know, at the altar this morning. Ah, the cross. Ah, the cross. Where high falls found the light. And the burden of my heart was rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day Apata Aye Raye Shebi Isademi Jekio me o eje to shola ti are she wo son fe she mi o si so mi di mi mo can somebody say nothing e my hands I bring simply to thy cross I cling. A come to thee for help. 
milk had come to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Watch me say, Oh, I die. Oh, so Let's ask for cleansing, for purging. Those of you that are not out, I don't know if you anything you want, you feel that you need God in your life. Let's pray, God, forgive me. God have mercy upon me. Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. Create in me a new heart, O Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away, O Lord. In my weakness, Lord, I receive strength this morning. Let the blood cleanse me. Let mercy, mercy defend me. Let your mercy uphold me. Let your mercy sustain me this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let the blood of Jesus speak. Cleanse. Porch. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we come to acknowledge our sins, our faults, our errors. The Bible says who can cleanse himself from secret sin. If God is to mark iniquity, we stand. Even our failure, things we're supposed to do, we fail to do it. Our disobedience, this is what makes Saul to go to hell. Just what we call simple disobedience. Instruction that we did not carry out thoroughly. Father God Almighty, we have taken you for granted many times. Please God, forgive us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, we are vulnerable. We are weak, but you are strong. Let your mercy reprogram our lives and let your strength be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come today to the altar. Let the blood of Jesus purify us. Let the blood of Jesus, Lord, cleanse us. The Bible said the blood is speaking. Let the blood speak forgiveness. Let the blood speak strength. Let the blood speak divine acceptability. Let the blood, the blood speak, Lord Jehovah God, our God strength, and of course, Lord Father, into our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask as we rise today, O oh God Almighty, we rise with new energy to serve God, to follow God, to do the will of God. Let our strength, Lord, be double. Let grace speak for us in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, to the whole congregation this morning, Lord Jehovah God, I pray that covenant of mercy, O Lord, will be renewed over our lives. That we we'll begin to enjoy your abundant mercy in all the areas of our lives. Father, we thank you. Glory be to the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Let's quickly have the closing hymn as we share the grace. Amen. Let's have the closing.